tranquil. So you're someone that's very tranquil. So uh, I feel like you should channel those. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So thank you. Yeah, again. No, I'm fine now. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. So thank you again for joining us today for this session. First of all, I want to say like, how are you, how has your lockdown been? How has it been for you? Um, my lockdown has been busier than after, busier than ever. Um, everyone's out cycling, walking, whatever, doing, exercising. I've been in the salon six days a week since lockdown happened. Really, to be honest. Yeah, um, very productive because it made me rethink um, everything, um, all aspects of our, our business and going forward. So cool. I've been busy. Yeah, that's good. It's better to what, well, in my opinion, I think it's better to be busier. Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. So how, let, if we can just like kind of introduce you to the audience, like how did you get your start in the hairdressing industry? I started in the late 80s in Beirut and um, where I was born. And uh, I, I, I start I, I, by accident. Just a friend dropped by one day. I was at work and he said, fancy working in a hair salon? I'm like, why not? And that was then. <laughs> Never looked wow. back since. Yeah, and, it was and- definitely what I wanted to do. Amazing. And what made you move to the, the UK and base yourself in the UK? I, I was lucky. My dad was living and working here for a number of years. So I just came over again. It was just luck again. I came over to stay for a little bit. And then one thing led to another. And here I am for almost 30 years now. So plus. Wow. Um, yeah. So kind of bringing it back to um like coronavirus and lockdown and, and the salons being shut, what were your initial worries um, at the beginning of, no- of lockdown? Well, the initial worries was the unknown. Where are we going? How long is it going to take? Uh, finance, uh, 15 members of staff, their lives. That was really my worry initially, like not knowing. Yeah, I suppose it's always a, a big a big worry when you don't know how long something's going to go on for and you know you're in a livelihood so can't do anything yeah just a note to say to people that are watching this stream that if you have any questions um for honey or um about you know reopening the salon if you're a a smaller or independent salon then definitely leave them in the comments and we'll get through them as well um so how have you been planning and strategizing for your reopening, if we're looking at the the July date, so it's just start start with the salon, uh, rethink, declutter, make space. Obviously, listening to all the PPE um, advice, but we don't have accurate um, guidelines yet. So it's really hard to go out and buy everything and get ready, and and then they'll tell you something else. So that's been a little bit difficult. But a lot of it is common sense, really. Um, you know, um, we're lucky we have a spacious salon and right. the amount of staff that we have is, is working. We've re-rostered everyone's hours, longer hours. Um, right. We tried to split two teams. That didn't work with the roster. We have also, we're going to be opening Sundays as extra to accommodate the demand. Cool. So um, would you be doing seven days a week or six? Hear that. Sorry. 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 Again? Sorry I didn't hear that. Um, will you be doing seven days a week then if you're open on a Sunday as well? Yeah, I mean, we've always, I've always been one not to open Sundays because Sundays for me is a sacred day, really. And mm-hmm. I think everyone should have that. As a, I'm, I'm a bit traditional like that. Um, yeah. But from a business point of view, it's good to have Sundays open. Um, I think we'll do that for, two, for, for three months and see how it goes. And then we'll discuss it and we'll see where we're going to go from there, how, how much, how demand... You know, if, it, if it's less, then we'll again go back to six days. Yeah. And how, how are your staff feeling about that? I want to say a huge thank you for all, all my staff. They've been, we've been meeting on Zoom twice a week, on WhatsApp group, Facebook group. They've been amazing. They've just backed me up all the way. And it's hard for them because they're sitting at home and they can't do a lot. And, 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 and to get self-motivated and get excited it's very difficult to get up and pick up a doll's head and uh, do a balayage. Yeah. It's quite hard to do that. I will do that at home. So you're not in a professional environment. So, but they've been amazing. They've been practicing. We've been sharing lots of ideas. So a huge thank you for them. So. Good. Good. 
Um, so you said you've been staying in touch with them via WhatsApp and Zoom. How would you give, what advice would you give to fellow salon owners about like starting to think about bringing start their stylists back into salon and, and talking to them about like changes and shifts and stuff like that? Well, you have to have, it sounds a bit sort of um, army soldier, but we, we, we've, we've done procedures for everything. And we're, yeah. every meeting that we have, we do them in short doses, like how to come in the salon, where you're going to be working. We're going to have segregated stations for each stylist. We, we thought of every single detail from the water bottles to cleaning your tools. So everything has a procedure and we've written it all out. It's all printed, laminated, and it's, and it's all that information is given to the staff to study over the period. And also yeah. just a week before to bring in a member of family um, do their hair just to get a feel for the salon and practice a little bit and go through the procedure. That's such a good tip. That is, I haven't heard that one before. That is such a good tip to kind of make them feel yeah, a bit comfortable. You don't want them to come in and go, oh my God, I've got, I mean, in a way it's going to be easier because we're not doing tea and coffee and all that kind of, you know, you're just going to be focusing working where you are. And yeah. in a way it's just, it's just a new procedure. You just have to follow and remember, and we've got to have them written and put up on the wall, to be honest, unless, probably gonna look a bit ugly but it doesn't matter so that it reminds them yeah and uh, i want them to be i don't want to alienate the experience of the clients when they come back you know and and i don't want the staff to feel uncomfortable because it it, it will transcend yeah. on the client so you want to be relaxed and, and happy to come back to work yeah definitely what do you think will be the biggest change um for when the salons reopen like i the think people's behavior is going to be very different yeah like some people would be very understanding um very patient um and some people will be not completely the opposite so that's going to be an interesting um it, it's going to I'm, I'm looking forward to that in a way to see how people are but generally so far from social media people have been supporting me on social media you know and people sending emails and so on and i've been talking on the phone to clients daily um, the support is immense and yeah. they all understand and uh, because we're under pressure we're, we've got to do all these new procedure run on time fit in 10 clients a day or whatever we can't as a business function if you're doing three clients a day it, it doesn't work yeah so you, you've got to try and keep some normality with the new process yeah and I also think that a lot of the time as a, a customer you'll go to the hairdressers you'll it's like a social you know, environment. I I don't it know how you, how you feel about that. That's going to obviously have to change because we'll be wearing face masks and visors. Well, we don't know that yet, but that will definitely change the experience. To be honest with you, maybe a little bit, but um, we, we in our salon we we laugh a lot, and and that's part of what we do all day, every day. And I think we're not going to stop laughing. We're probably going to like draw faces on a mask to start off with, funny faces and all that. We're going to do pranks and things. So I think you've got to keep a sense of humour. And, yeah. you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We won't be wearing masks for the next 10 years. It's only going to be temporary before it's, yeah. you know, looking forward to the next step, basically. Yeah. Um, so we've starting to get some questions through here. Um, Linda says, common sense is good, but we need guidelines. And I think we definitely, we all agree with that. Um, what, what I agree with the. Yeah, go on, sorry. No, no, sorry. I think my connection's not great today. Um, no, definitely, okay. we all agree that we need guidelines. What, what have you put in place as your guidelines until we get that from the government? Um, well, we've um, we've, segregate, we've we've created sec zones in the in, in the salon, so we have fifteen chairs. There's only going to be. Uh, seven operating six or seven okay. um we've taken off with the reception area was completely taken away okay. um we, we cluttered everything in the salon uh we're gonna have um uh we're not gonna have a, a plastic thing on the desk we're going to have just a, a tape on the floor that not to get closer okay. uh we'll be taking bills and future appointments while the client's in the chair so um, yeah we're not gonna so literally the client comes in there's a front of house team I mean depends on the on, on, on the size of your salon it's easier if you're smaller to be honest you'll be dealing with it on a one-to-one -one. 
but we're going to have a front of house team, two people um, managing the client's arrival. If the client's too early, then they'll come back in 10 minutes. Um, we sit them down, they go through the service, hopefully with one stylist that does as much as we can fit everything, cut and color and finish and drying. Yeah. Um, and then we take appointments, like I said, while the client's in the chair, they've paid, they've made appointments, and then they go out the exit, which is the back of the salon. So it's like a one-way system. Oh, amazing. So you've really... It's kind of a smooth operation, obviously. And then, you know, and also on arrival, clients will have to wash their hands. Yeah. They'll have to come in with clean hair. Um, they can't bring anyone with them. Um, they can't bring shopping with them and all that. We're going to be sending them emails with all the details beforehand. Um, PPE, obviously masks, visors. Um, I mean, I'm not going to wear a visor. I've got my own visor here. So yeah. if I put a visor, I won't be able to cut hair. Because I'm going to see. <laughs> um, the staff will wear visors is not up to them. Um, obviously, we've got disposable gowns. They're horrible, but we're going to have to use them yeah. um, for a while. Um, aprons, we've got those. We've got, yeah, the whole, the whole list of cleaning products and so on. Yeah. Um, but all the staff have got their own tools. They've got their own section for their own products. They're, they only touch the products. They clean that section. So each stylist is responsible for their own section. It's easier to monitor and it's easier to work as a team. Yeah. And there's another team that will be responsible of what we call spots where if people touch banisters, hands and all that, so it'll be cleansed and anti-back anti between, between um, it's, it's, to be honest with you, as, as, as industry, we, we clean all the time anyway. Yeah. We anti-back the salon before, before COVID. So yeah. for us, it's just a little bit more, really. Yeah. Um, David on Facebook has said, has the government confirmed the 4th of July? No, they haven't, but obviously we're just kind of working towards the last statement that was made. Um, and we await further information on that. So we're kind of going by that, David. Um, Mark has said, have you changed the wages um, for, for the more hours in the new systems? So have you had to adjust that business side of things? And that is based on how you pay your stuff, whether it's um, on percentage or um, whether you you do it um, as a daily rate. It's, in, it's every salon is different, every salon owned. Um, luckily, um, we um, uh, luckily we, we we didn't have to change the hours. We kept the same hours, just longer days and shorter days. So mm -hmm. my staff are doing uh, four long days and then having three days off, but they're still doing the same hours. But yeah. it worked out well because of the amount of people and chairs that we have. But obviously each business is different. Um, but yeah, uh, it, also it's unknown the first month how much we're gonna take revenue. Yeah, We're gonna take probably a lot the first six to eight weeks. Yeah, And then eventually it's gonna drop down. So it, it's kind of month on month really to see how it is and assess it. Oh, you've got some praise here over from Facebook um, saying the abstract team are an amazing team of individuals who work together brilliantly. And oh. Julie says, I want to come and work oh, in your you. salon. It seems like fun. So oh. let, let oh. Julie know if you've got any openings. <laughs> um, and then someone's asked, what's your salon called? So it's abstract hairdressing. Um, and Karen, Karen's asked, are you offering blow dries? as some countries um, are saying not to do this. Um, the connection is um, not working at the moment. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear I you can now. I can see a question here. I think about um, pricing and PPE, is that right? I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Can you hear me, honey? I can't hear a thing. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? There's nothing I can do, it's um, gone frozen. Okay, we it's can hear you. 
We can hear you. There's questions here. I don't know if I can answer them. I'm just sending Honey a message. Can you hear us now, Honey? We, we might have lost, we've, I think we've lost a um, I, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm reading some of your questions. I'm not sure if that helps um, okay. answering. Um, it does. So. Honey, can you hear us? Have you seen my message? Yeah, maybe try and join it on my phone and see if that works. It's a shame. What's happening today? It's like, I'm not sure. Okay. I want to answer their questions. Okay, we're just trying to connect back with Honey. Bear with us. Zoom and store. Hello? Can you hear us, honey? Hello? I'm not sure if you can hear me. I'm trying to answer. <laughs> they can hear me. They can hear me. Oh, okay. Hear well, I'm going to answer, if you can hear me, I'm going to answer your, um, some of your questions here. Um, how are you handling bookings with no definite date to work? Difficult. Uh, we've had to move them to people twice, but I'd rather move people and um, rather than not having a, an, an appointment book open and just not knowing. People want hope. They want a date, even if you have to change it. So that's how we're handling them and we're taking them. Hi. <laughs> now we've got two of you. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. My connection froze. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear us? No. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear us? So funny this is. I feel like <laughs> there's no sound coming in. Can you sound it? Is it? Honey, it says you're connecting to audio. Yeah. Uh, can you hear us now? I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. So we're gonna need you to come off of the other video. Yeah, I'm closing it. It's closing it now. Cool. It's completely frozen. Right, here we are. Right, we got you back. Okay. I'm so sorry. I was like standing there, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's okay because it froze on a really nice smile, and I think oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh right, but I wasn't going like a funny face. That's no, really funny. which is would be worse. You're very okay. kind. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Let's get back into these questions then. So. All right. You were talking about PPE. Yeah, okay. So obviously with what one of the um, listeners was saying earlier on, that there's, not, there's so much you can do because we don't have the guidelines yet. Um, however, we prepped with, you know, your gloves and, you know, usual masks. We will be supplying the clients with masks if they don't have one. Mm -hmm. We will ask them to bring their own. Um, if they come in without one, we'll supply them or we'll have to put a surcharge on that just for what the mask cost. Right. Uh, or two a day and then and dispose of it. We're not doing reusable ones because you take it home, you put it down, it gets contaminated, you put it in the car, someone else touches it. So just disposable ones are easier. Um, visors, like I said, I won't be wearing one, but the staff want to wear one, that's fine. Um, disposable gowns, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have those. Obviously, not really great, but we will. We have also um, scrummy towels, which are um, disposable, biodegradable ones. Anyway, we we'll always use those. Yeah. Um, and um, and um, just lots of cleaning. You know, anti bag gel everywhere, and clients wash their hands, and yeah. arrive with clean hair. But we don't really have guidelines yet. So until at the end of a week, 
we're not sure 100 percent that might change so I, I i don't want to stock up on too much i wouldn't stock yeah. up yet until they until they say you need this you need that yeah i think it's again like in case anyone's just joining us um we have to stress that this is all just following what we've been told by the government so far so we don't but, know what date will we be opening etc um we need to get guidelines well, to be honest with you, I don't know if the government really knows what they're doing half the time and who they're yeah. consulting. Because at the end of the day, we've been following the government black and white, do this, do that. But yeah. some things you can't have to use your common sense, like I said earlier on. Um, so I, I don't know who are the experts behind it. I want to know. It's like changing the gowns on the clients. I understand that. It's touching the client, dispose of it. But what about our aprons, for example? You have to change your apron in between each client. Well, this apron is not actually touching anything. You're, right. you're only going to be touching the hair, which is clean. Um, there's not a lot of, well, there is contact, but it's not like, you know, it's not like a dentist or anything like that. You're not doing anything more invasive. So I think we're going to be over the top to start off with. Everyone's going to be over the top. Yeah. And then eventually it will ease down. So, but it's better to be safe though. Um, Carolina said, are you doing clients bet in between colour processes? Have you thought about that or processing? Well, Sorry. Yeah, we have discussed this with my staff. I mean, the people, we have a lot of clients that have like balayage, toner, treatment, cut. So we're trying to stick to one person. So as much as we can, not to have too much crossover, but there are, there are clients that have been coming for years that want one person to cut, one person to colour. Right. But yeah we are doing as long as you wash your hands um and and you're cleansing you know between one certain chair and another so yeah we are we're going to be doing that because otherwise you start restricting yourself so much to the point that you, you can't do anything so yeah i would definitely be doing that cool um katie has said that um she's working on her finances this week and if you go onto the weller site there's a profit um, price calculator to download so that's a great tip from from katie oh, great as well, yeah. for Weller as well. <laughs> yeah. um, I've got that as well and how so you mentioned about um like email marketing and that you've been active on instagram are these the ways that you've been in touch with your clients or like keeping clients informed well from day one i just thought what can i do apart from social media just the usual so I've been supplying my regular clients with um, SOS uh, kits, color kits for their roots and the ends. Color fresh mainly, a lot of color fresh. Thank God for Weller who have been supplying me with color fresh and color throughout the whole lockdown, literally two, three uh -huh. days. Yes, yeah, the only company I, I, ever that has been continued to deliver. So thank God for that. Yeah. Um, so I've been keeping in contact by sending them kits. Um, they phone up, I give them instructions, we have a chat, and, and so many people want to just a chat on the phone, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um, so that's one way. Um, they've come in to pick up their kit, like from outside the salon, without coming in, so I'll put it outside, they come in and pick it up, post some of it. But yeah, generally speaking to people, um, not too many emails for them, They're, you know, people get a lot of emails these days. Yeah. Um, but mainly social media, Instagram, doing some funny videos, trying to get motivated to do video on your own in the salon. It's not easy. Yeah. Um, and my son's been helping me um, doing, he's been doing the, you know, the camera and all that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just like trying to get motivated. Now I'm going to do a happy video. It's very difficult. Yeah, it's um, true. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to not bore people and just keep them, you know, keep in touch. And it is, that, it is that keeping in touch as well. Like you yeah. talked earlier is that, the yeah. going to the salon is so social. Yeah, yeah but I've, I've made it known to my clients that the phone line's open every day between 10 and 3 or 4. Um, so people have been ringing. So oh, everyone, good. yeah, so that, that's another line of like, oh, you, you're there. Yeah, I am here. If you have any problems, ring me. So in my social media, I've, I've been saying messages like if you need to speak or if you, I've had even people that have never, I've had so many new clients ring up, inquire and ask, and then now they're going to come in. Yeah. Um, because of, um, being active and oh i need this i need help yeah um, do you think that's know? obviously a, that's a positive um of being oh gosh almost dropped my water over my laptop um of being <laughs> a independent salon is sorry that, so that, is that not, 
is that like that's definitely a positive of being an independent salon I feel like you get you know that kind of closer bond with your clients well we, we, we're not a passing trade salon so we're, 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 we're not on a high street we're like on the side and we've yeah. all, our, all our clients are repeat clients some of them for years and years and years um, so yes I've built up a, we've built up a really nice I mean hairdressing is not just about cutting hair it's about building a relationship you all know that about having that close connection with people yeah. and people, people come to you because they like you not just because they like the haircut as well yeah. obviously it's important um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, um, for years and years, people say, oh, why don't you open a chain of salons or a few more salons? And I've always wanted to have one salon big enough um, and enjoy my work. I'm, I'm, I'll get too stressed if I have too many salons. I can't remember. Yeah. So now is the time where, yeah, being independent, thank God, I've, I've got 15 people to worry about and, you know, their livelihood and, you know, and finance and so on. So, yeah, it's definitely yeah. easier for a small salon. Um, if I have 10, 15 or 20 salons now, I don't know how I'll be. <laughs> I wouldn't be smiling. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be stressed. I would wish them, but I wish, wish them all the luck. I'm sure they'd be fine. They, they've got their systems in place and all that. But still, I'd rather have smaller than bigger, really. Yeah, I think that um, Wendy might miss this earlier. But if you can repeat how many people in the salon at one time you'll be having, including the staff and clients, you touched upon it earlier. Okay, yeah, good question. So we, as, as I said, we have 15 chairs and we're going to be only having four to five stylists per day maximum. Yeah. Between nine and nine most days. So we've, we've rostered the staff to work longer hours and then have extra days off. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's and, the front, and the front of house team is crucial. They're going to be managing the, the, the sort of the time they're yeah. running late. But we're going through daily now with all the appointments and spotting where there's too much pressure, then we have to move appointments around. It's a nightmare, but you've just got to deal with it. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, I want solutions. I don't want, you know, I don't want sort of problems. And so only four stylists to five maximum per day. Um, but opening Sundays has then made it easier to put three members of staff to stretch out yeah. to, take, to take more appointments and to meet the demand because I've had people, we're now booked up to the end of July. Oh, wow. Yeah, fully booked every member of staff to the end of July. So, um, and uh, it's a bit like Christmas, but like an extended version of Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's great, but any, then again, we're not on 100% capacity because we are leaving more gaps between. Normally we um, normally would leave, you know, normally would be working back to back. You know, we're quite busy, but... Yeah, yeah, we are leaving more gaps where it's possible, giving them more lunch breaks, um, more breaks, uh, allowing more time for services. Um, we changed some of our service menus, so we, we're not doing like fringe trims anymore. Um, we're not doing things like tint tea section. We used to do quite a lot of those. We're not doing those. Rufus uh, asked, will you be doing blow dries, which I think was a question just before you cut off. Well, everyone's asking that. We don't really know 100%, but we yeah. will be drying hair, yeah, um, unless they tell us not to. I think every country around the world is doing different things, but I think everyone's going back to normal now, to be honest. And yeah, you can cut hair and not blow dry, but that's just like taking out the whole, half the experience for the client, walking out with wet hair. I mean, we won't be doing like blast dries in the salon, you know, people who have color, they'll just have to walk out with wet hair, we'll just dry the fringe so that yeah. they'll be out. So there's certain things we're amending. Right, fair enough. Um, so, Julie, you've got fan hair, um, honey. Julie said, what a nice guy. Uh, okay. I think well, that's my wife's called to see if you My wife's called Julie, so I'm not... Oh, is it your wife? Have you no, wanted someone wife. in our Facebook comments? My wife wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to touch on retail before we wrap up. Um, yeah. And if anyone has any more questions, send them through now before we wrap up. Um, what is your perspective on retail once the salon opens? Because I don't know if it's a massive part of your um, business, but, you know, the buying um, products aspect of it and upselling. I, I think retail in the hairdressing industry the last decade or more has been really, really poor and dead. And, you know, we, we are the experts. We, we, you know, it's, it's a bit like, I always say, what is the difference between you going on Instagram and then watching someone telling you how to use a product and think, oh, that's amazing. Or actually sitting face to face with an expert and telling you how to use a product. Yeah. I think 
I think um, people are ready to pamper themselves now and they'll have everything. So every appointment that I've booked online on, on the phone recently, I've said, do you want this? Do you want that? Like, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. People are starving now. So retail is reborn again. And I think um, people want to have that um, um, pamper time and then feel good factor and they want it there an instant. So it's, 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 it's part of our job is what we do. We advise yeah. people. We don't push. Um, we don't, I don't have like huge sales targets for my staff. Um, you know, they have to do this, have to do that. No, they have to do it because they want to do it um, and they should do it. So I think it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be great. And it's going to have a huge jump, hopefully. Well, I hope so too for the industry. Um, I've got a question here about charging extra for services. So obviously you said you charge more for things like the mask, et cetera, but Will you be putting a surcharge on well, services? Well, we've thought of that a lot, but we, as it happens for us, we were, we, we, it's, it's time for us, um, we're a bit, basically a few months ago, we were, we were meant to revamp our, our price list. And every year or two, I, I take services out, put new services in, change it all, revamp it. And it was due to be happening. It didn't happen just before lockdown, a few, few months. So for us, it's just the right time to change it. So. I've decided to do do the redo the prices and then kind of incorporate the extra charge of the PPE in there. Yeah. Now the next three months we'll monitor the expenses. If our expenses are exceeding what we expected, then we'll have to put a surcharge on. But right. I don't want to I don't want to put our prices and a surcharge as too much. Um, I think just readjusting our prices is good to start off with. Um, some services, I've, I've had time to rethink every single service and break it down. And is it making money? Um, how much is it making? You know, I think that's what the time has been good for, really, rethinking everything. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll monitor for three months and then we'll see how much PPE we're going through. If it eases off, then it's great. Um, in the meantime, we're not doing tea and coughing, you know, that facility. That, that is a huge cost to us because we have a proper barista machine and all that so that, yeah. that that will balance it out a little bit but we'll see how it goes yeah it's all just we don't know it's unprecedented times as they say it, isn't it so you don't yeah, know. lots of questions lots of questions i think you've got to get stuck in and just get on with it and just to see how it goes and unfolds it's step by step and then just reassess you know regularly yeah. but, um, we've had a few more questions but you did answer them before i've just had a look through so anyone that missed the beginning this will be saved on facebook and on IGTV and on YouTube and on the website, so everywhere. Right. Um, the last question I have is what have you, what has lockdown and having the salon closed for this amount of time like taught you or what have you kind of thought about during lockdown as a salon owner? Um, it, well, it's, it's again, I don't want to repeat myself, but it, it made me rethink everything, like the business um, starting from price structure to how we're running um where we're going in the future finance as well i think we were all like before happy you know money's coming in money's coming out we're like happy yeah it's to prepare better for the future really and um i think what's good from this is i think clients are going to come back really having a, a higher value and appreciation for us and that and i think that's not that they didn't before but i think more than ever um even though we're, we're given supplying with the color kits and and thinking, oh, man, they might not come back. They might end up doing the colour at home. Well, no, they've all emailed pictures and rang me and said, great, it's helped me out the colour. However, this is difficult. I'm not doing this at home. Thank God you exist. I will come back to you. So I think that I'm looking forward to, of people appreciating what we do, how hard it is and how hard we work. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it made me think a lot of things, to be honest, almost like, you know, almost is this a chance in my life where I need to be doing something different or, but no, at the end, it's like, no, this is what I do. This is what I love. And this is what I'll be doing forever. This is what you, you're excited to go back to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Honey, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, weather professionals, for supporting today's session. Again, um, education link is in the comments. And Honey, I hope you get home safely. <laughs> I will in my in my son's car. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. Thank well, you. thank you everybody thank you for, for joining us. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.